Hmm. 47 inches. Less than four feet. A little less than four feet. One inch shy. Yeah. And about forty five inches wide. So it is a baby, baby grand. Okay. What is it? What is it? It is a Kramer Cupy model baby grand. Uh, it's a short compass, what they called a child's piano. Um, but this one's pretty special in that it is, though made for children, it is a real piano inside. It has three string unisons, copper wrapped bass strings on a separate bridge. It's not easy to see inside, but it does have a real double escapement grand piano action. Not just a a single English escapement style action that you find in the players and like that. So though it is miniaturized, um, it's a real piano, it's a, it's not a toy. made in probably 1928-1929 I believe by the Kelso company who I believe got it in license from the M. Schultz company who put out their marionette this is a uh, a less frilly version the marionettes often had a player mounted into them and the cases were decorated in uh, chinoiserie and just gaudy little things. This is just a basic no frills version, but it does it was it was fitted with ivory keys at the time, and there was uh, cheap celluloid available. So. Tom Thumb and uh, what was her name? Uh, little girl that became the ambassador. But, but short compass uprights like this are pretty common. But grands like this are quite rare. I've only seen, well, this is the only one of these I've ever seen. Uh, I've seen pictures of others like it, but I've never come across one. And of course, they didn't make them for very long because 1929 was 1929. Everybody went under the next year. Chickering, maybe. These are possibly chickering, a set of chickering legs and liars Possible. that will go with this piano if you'd like to switch the legs yeah, those are nice for a different legs. design. They have solid brass ends. You could put smaller wheels. I don't think those wheels are correct for that leg. They just seem awful big. They look like upright wheels, but uh, they would be. Uh, it would look nice. Yeah, if you don't care for the gate leg. Yeah, gate legs are original. They're in good shape. 
Yeah, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just okay. They're just skate legs. More screws. Two more. Ooh. What number is this? Five one one two eight. Most other things are marked with that number. Yeah, that's the case number. That says the number they kept the parts in order with. There we go. Okay, here we have the action out of the Kramer, and as you can see, it is a, a grand piano action, and it has a double escapement mechanism. Uh, it's fitted with what they call a Thayer knuckle, but in the end, it's still a grand piano, and it can be regulated to play properly. Um, it's not quite a Steinway action, but that doesn't matter much. Uh, as you can see, the uh, the moths have gotten to it pretty badly, so it's going to need a thorough walkthrough. But it's here in all parts, so it's all here to be fixed. No parts need to be hunted down in any way. A um, new set of hammers can be um, made by Bronson for you pretty nicely. The only point of damage that we found is that uh, at some point in storage uh, there was a mouse living in it and he chewed up this end of the key so this button is going to have to be replaced or repaired. Easier to replace it than to repair that one. And he's even got leads in the keys so that it has a proper grand touch. And let's see, ivories on the key tops to boot, which is kind of nice. And much cheaper key tops were available at the time. And these are all, there's a couple of little chips, but those can be repaired with polymer repairs. So no ivory has to be hunted down in or anything like that. Yeah, like I said, uh, most of these little short compass pianos, especially the Grands, uh, only have a single escapement action, which is essentially just a stick on the on the bottom key that just flicks that. Just it flicks up, pushes on that, it flicks it up out of the way. It's just a stick. This has the um, the repetition, the reloading mechanism, so that the piano can be played quickly without the need to raise the key so high. So, so it is a real action. So. All right, now we're down in the action cavity. And, uh, well, I figure I start at the top. Here's the real cast iron plate. You know, as I said, it's a real piano. It's got a proper cast iron plate. It's got a pin block, multi-laminate pin block. Uh, I will be honest. The block is going to need to be replaced. It is failing right there. But that's not a complicated job on this particular piano. Um, nice multi-part key bed. Feels pretty good. No splitting or anything. And back here we have the damper action. And while it's just a... Uh, 
a simple damper action. It doesn't have a sostenuto or anything in it. It, uh, you know, does have uh, proper pinch bushings and uh, uh, looks like that could do a little attention, but uh, yeah, it's all proper wooden parts and there's captions in the rails, so everything is uh, regulatable. You can make it play. very nicely. So in that sense, like as I said, uh, it's not a fancy instrument, but it does have all the, the bass points covered. And musicians I've known like these little pianos. Because the essence of them is, what they've done is they had to take a big piano and they lop off the bottom six or eight keys and they lop off the top six or eight keys and the thing is, these bottom six or eight keys are the longest notes in the piano. So when you take care of them, get rid of them, the next set of keys can then take up your available case space. And so what you got is basically the middle of a larger piano trimmed away and made into a smaller instrument. So they have better tone than uh, one would expect. As I said, musicians are quite um, fond of them and restaurants and such because they don't take up much room and they have a pretty good sound. So just a good look at the underside of the case. Again, the, the key bed. There's no beams in this piano no. where there normally is. No, the plate holds everything. All the all the strain of the strings and it holds the rim in shape through the bolts. But Looks like one separation shrinkage crack there. Looks to be in good shape. All in all, pretty good shape. Nobody's been in there with screws and glue and stuff, so you don't have repairs that need to be repaired before you can repair it. And what year is this? About? About 1928, 28, 29, something like that.